In this video, I'm going to show you how to use browser.debug and the VS Code debugger to troubleshoot a WebDriver I.O. test. Check it out! I'm Danny Aslan Perez, I'm a senior front end engineer. In my last video, I showed you how to connect WebDriver I.O. to the VS Code debugger, which allows us to set breakpoints. If you missed it or you want to check it out, click here. I'm going to walk you through a few things that you can and can't do with the VS Code debugger some things that you can and can't do with the browser.debug API, and how you can use both to be able to successfully troubleshoot your test. So here what I've got is a test that directs the browser to go to the website Dev2. Um, it's a pretty cool uh, developer forum blog place thing. Um, definitely worth checking out, uh, but I just chose it randomly for the sake of this video, um, also because I kind of like the site. Um, but anyway, I'm going to go to that website and for the sake of example, um, in order to debug this test, there's probably a few things uh, wrong with what I have here, um, but I'm going to run the test, see what happens, and then show you what you can and you can't do with both the uh, ES Code debugger as well as with WebDriver.io. What I want to find out as part of this test is I want to pull all the article titles. Um, that are that are on the site. So I want to see what the top five posts are. There's probably other ways of doing this, but I'm just doing this for the sake of example. Um, First, which you uh, can and can't do with the VS Code debugger. Um, this is where we're going to find out very quickly as soon as we as we run this. Um, so I'm going to run it, and we're going to just look take a look at the first error, and then go step by step. Cool. Uh, so I'm going to open up the VS Code debugger here, and I'm going to run debug test. Um, let's see what happens if I run it. Oh. Unexpected, unex undefined to equal detect toxic language. Okay. Um, by the way, this is the post that was uh, that's currently there on the uh, Dev2 website. Um, this is what I was uh, pulling up just now. Um, so I'm just checking what's what's going to be coming up there. So so that's the first one. I'm going to run this and I want to see why I'm getting undefined. Um, because I'm going over every element that I get back for the CSS selector. Um, I should be, I'm expecting to see something different here for inner text. Um, at least I think it's called inner text, but I'm going to find out. Maybe that's why I'm getting undefined. Um, I'm going to run the debugger, boom, it shows up, and I am currently stopped. Oof, jeez, made it too big. I have everything over here for my debugger. I currently have this the article element. Um, and so let me open up the debug console. Uh, can I do article? Uh, article dot inner text article dot html wait what am I looking at article is another object interesting can I do article dot get text oh huh? article dot get text article that get text okay this is example number one the debug console will freeze if you try to run anything uh, that uses the webdriver io api once you're inside of the vs code debugger um, this is very unhelpful the reason for that is that these browser calls like and, and anything on browsers something like browser dot get text or if you do right some like get you some element um, and then get text uh, all of these methods are asynchronous operations it just so happens that webdriver io gives you a really neat api um, to be able to call it as if it's synchronous but under the covers it's still something asynchronous so as soon as you as soon as you run one of these uh, any any one of these calls, right? Even um, a dollar or 
dollar a dollar both of those are going to are going to be async and you're not going to be able to do anything else in in the debugger you can hit play to kind of to kind of let it go um but it, it it's otherwise like you can't do anything else in the debug console um so that would be super unhelpful except bum, 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 um WebDriver IO gives you uh, this thing called browser.debug, uh, which will give you an interactive terminal in the shell wherever it is that you're running it. Um, there are a few limitations to it, though, and this is what I'm going to show you. So if I run browser.debug, I'm not going to set a breakpoint, um, and I'm going to run this again. And I'm going to show you what browser.debug does. It's basically the same thing as doing debugger when you're when you have a um, JavaScript in uh, in your browser. Um, so boom, when I run it, I had an interactive shell session, but now this is telling me I have an async function that didn't complete. Aha! Uh -huh, because browser.debug is holding it's holding on to your test, and so your test isn't finishing. So Jasmine has a default timeout for it, and that's something that we can configure here in wdio.com. Um, you're going to look for something called Jasmine timeout. Timeout. There is a default wait for timeout. A connection retry. That's not what I'm looking for. Jasmine node ops. Default timeout. That's 10 seconds. That seems to line up with what I have here. Yeah, that's probably it. Um, let's make that obnoxiously large. Um, and I'm going to run it again. Cool, it's open. I've, I am now in my interactive shell session. So, as you can see here, I can type um, console.log hello. So, that works. Um, but you'll notice the debug console here at this point is useless. Can I type anything in here? Um, I don't. I don't even think this knows anything about my test. Um, this is only active once you once you've actually set a breakpoint. So I haven't set any breakpoints here. Um, I haven't set any breakpoints in my test, but my test is currently stopped. So here's the next thing: when you're inside of an interactive shell session using browser.debug. Um, you have access to do JavaScript things because, like, I can call console.log hello. Um, I can do things like that. What I can't do is um, reference some of the variables around me. So, if here the only other variable I can use is article. Um, so, if I wanted to reference article, I get article is not defined. So, I can't do that here. But if I was to set a breakpoint, let me comment this out, um, hit stop and rerun this i'll show you that now this isn't stopped here i can do things inside of the debug console here i can see what article is but i can't do anything with the browser object right uh if i do single article right then it's frozen and then i can't do anything so that's super annoying. So whenever you're debugging one of these tests and you want to use the VS Code debugger, you have to use a mixture of both. Just to recap, if you want to if you want to stop at some point in the middle of your test and then do things with the browser object, like call browser.getText um, or browser.isVisible, um, things of that sort, um, then you'll want to use browser.debug. Um, but if you just want to inspect other things about your test, like what values some variables might have, rather than sprinkle console.logs all over your test, you can set a breakpoint, and then you'll be able to see that inside of VS Code. Thanks for watching this video. If it helped you out, make sure to hit the like button. Subscribe to my channel to be able to see some of my upcoming videos. Till next time. Peace.